So let me first introduce the Dutch Digital Heritage Network. Uh, the aim of this uh, Dutch network is to increase the social value of the cultural heritage information maintained with libraries like the National Library, archives like the National Archives, museums and other cultural institutions like Sound and Vision. We work with a natural strategy, and this starts from the end user perspective, and it, it encourages institutions to provide digital uh, heritage information that's more visible, usable, and sustainable. There's a whole program around this, and it's about building strong cross-sector networks on the level of expertise and information. Linked data is regarded as one of enabling technologies. So these end users usually start with Google. They find stuff, but many topics do not show up. So we build portals, a lot of them, which one to choose. And can I browse from one portal to the other? Are they interlinked? And is the information within these portals up to date? Because usually uh, behind the scenes of the web portals, there's a lot of aggregation, copying of data from uh, sources not an ideal situation. We're working with some design principles to, uh, to get to a discovery infrastructure. We're rethinking the network and we're saying we should um, make uh, the data at the source much more usable. We, we refer to data and not copy data. So we can build portals uh, which are dynamic views on these uh, data sources. We apply linked data principles, use web-centric technologies, and where possible, use decentralized and distributed uh, technologies. Of course, these design principles are also applicable uh, uh, besides the heritage fields, even uh, outside of the Netherlands. We've built a roadmap for this discovery infrastructure. Uh, let's start at the, at the top, the web portals. We envision these to plug in to knowledge graphs. So they can ask, give me data about a specific topic and which data is related to that. So we have to build a knowledge graph for this. Um, this knowledge graph is fed uh, by the data set register, which I will be talking about next, uh, to discover relevant data sets in the heritage fields. But also, it's plugging into the network of terms, which will be another presentation this afternoon. But it all starts, of course, with a, a collection management system at the heritage institutions. There is a lot of data, and they should advertise this data in the data set register, so it's known which data sets are out there. And these collection sh systems should use more links uh, and not strings, so they use the terms from the network of terms. So the dataset register aims to give more insight into the availability of datasets in the heritage fields and to encourage the use of these datasets. This insight can help so software and also search engines like Google to find datasets. By analyzing these data sets, we can build a knowledge graph on heritage for better use of this data. This tool has, has been built uh, within the network of uh, uh, digital heritage and is now being managed and promoted by the, uh, the National Archives. So the principles behind this data set register, uh, heritage organizations are encouraged to provide data set descriptions of the data sets they supply. And here a data set can be a data dump of their catalog, Sparkle endpoint, uh, any data that's coming out of their systems and can be shared uh, under a license, preferably uh, open license to the community. We encourage them to publish these data set descriptions Again, uh, we like the data to be at the source, so the organization should uh, publish their own data set descriptions. But register the URL of these data script descriptions with the data set register so we can find them. Because the data set register crawls these data set uh, descriptions, stores them in a triple store, and refreshes this information on a regular basis. So at the end, we have a uh, 
uh, a data set register which can be searched uh, via a, a website or a more machine readable via Sparkle queries. We started with um, designing uh, a layout for these dataset descriptions. We made requirements for dataset descriptions. We didn't think um, made anything new. We just chose an ontology which is uh, very good. Schema.org has a good um, uh, dataset description uh, uh, requirements. So we adopted uh, these. The benefit of this is that when an organization is using these dataset descriptions, uh, also Google understands your dataset descriptions. So it's also findable by Google. So our main focus is um, getting these dataset descriptions as a machine readable data. So we have an API uh, which can be used to uh, notify us about this URL. And the, the triple store you can uh, reach, it's a public triple store, you can search uh, with Sparkle. Of course, it's all very technical, so we also made a demonstrator, an API demonstrator, which uses the API but can be used by anyone. Unfortunately, uh, only in Dutch at the moment, so bear with me. Um, it has um, uh, uh, several parts. The main part, of course, is uh, getting uh, the dataset descriptions searchable. At the moment, there are over 700 dataset descriptions from several uh, Dutch and Belgium uh, heritage uh, institutions. Which, which can be uh, searched. Well, this is what a dataset description looks like, one of the search results, sound and vision. Um, um, the quality of the dataset descriptions is very important, so that's a task for the heritage organizations. They really have to think, how can I sell my data sets? So provide a good title, a good description, a license is uh, required. Who made the data sets? Who published the data sets? And also, of course, the technical information. How can we get to the data, the, the so-called distributions? In this case, uh, it, it points to a Sparkle endpoint with sound and vision. So at the moment, uh, we are um, communicating towards uh, heritage institutions to publish their data set descriptions, to make them a better quality so we can get a much, uh, much larger uh, part of the data set in the Netherlands uh, online as data set descriptions. And the next uh, step is to promote the, the use of the data set uh, register. One of the first will be our own knowledge graph. Because we know where the data sets are, we can uh, extract more knowledge from these data uh, sets to uh, to make it possible that portals use the knowledge graph to make dynamic uh, portals. So I'll now give the, the mic to Rosemarijn to tell how they use the dataset register. Thanks, Bob. Uh, yeah, my name is Rosemarijn de Groot. I uh, joined Sound and Vision half a year ago, and I'm a product manager for the Heritage and Research Department. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, show a little slide about the collection of Sound & Vision. I borrowed this uh, slide from my colleague Willem, who will be presenting this afternoon. So if you see the slide again, then he's the uh, original author. Um, but we have a core collection of audiovisual productions, so uh, uh, television programs, film, radio, music, uh, and a supporting collection of non-audiovisual materials. Uh, so for example, there's uh, books, there's photographs, costumes, logs, and scripts. Uh, and also press archives, since we um, integrated with uh, a press archive. Um, and in total, it comprises of more than 800,000 hours of radio, television, film, and music. And of course, uh, much of this data is still protected by copyright. Uh, we published um, the open collections in our general public portal, but we also publish it as uh, data in our open data lab. Um, yeah, you can see some of the data sets that we've published uh, in those circles. Uh, almost all metadata is published under a CC0 license, but this excludes the summaries and the descriptions uh, because they're made by the broadcasters and we're not the, the authors of them. 
Um, there's a limited amount of objects that we can publish under an open license. Um, a part of our collection, the Open Images data set, uh, is um, um, uh, published under a um, public domain license. And then we, for some data sets, we have uh, agreements with the, uh, with the rights holders. And we publish them in several distributions, so either through a Sparkle endpoint or a OAI PMH or as a downloadable file. And these are also the data sets that we publish in the data registry. Uh, I want to open this link now, see if it works. Yeah. Yeah, so we're the publisher of 11 data sets. Uh, Bob already showed uh, the first one. Uh, this is the entire catalog of Sound and Vision. You can see a short description. Uh, we talked about quality of descriptions. I think we'll talk about that later. Um, there's the URI, the license, uh, and this is available through a Sparkle endpoint. The open images data set, uh, the description isn't Dutch, but it's a bit more thorough. Um, uh, available under a public domain license. And there's also, there's an OAI PMH um, distribution, but there's also, uh, you can also uh, enter the data set on EU screen. Um, yeah, I will just quickly go through the other ones there. Partly um, data sets of, um, around the Second World War, because then the copyright was confiscated. Uh, the GTAA is our thesaurus, and uh, Willem will talk this afternoon on how we also make that available in the network of terms. Uh, with Barend and Van Dorp, we were able to make, uh, there, it's a Dutch uh, TV program, and we were able to make uh, an agreement with the rights holders. Why do we register data in the dataset registry? Well, we see it as a core task as a public institution, but also as a partner in the Dutch Digital Heritage Network to provide access to our holdings um, as far as possible, of course, within uh, copyright restrictions. We want to enable others to reuse our collection data and in doing so improve the discoverability, contextualization and increase engagement with various, various audiences. So by registering in the uh, NDE dataset registry, we improve the findability for our data in the heritage fields for both humans and machines. And the NDE registry is also connected to the CLARIA registry, which is uh, the registry for the humanities and the social sciences. So we also improve the findability of our collections, collection data uh, for the scientific field. So how do we publish data? Uh, it's a custom process uh, because our collection management system is not yet able to uh, uh, publish uh, itself. So we have a spreadsheet with all necessary information. We can uh, add data or change information over there that is transferred to a turtle file that is loaded onto our linked data server and then we can either queue the dataset uh, register API or we just wait until it refreshes uh, on itself. So yeah, in the future we would like to define more or better data sets. Uh, for example, you saw the uh, Sound and Vision catalog. Uh, it's, it's quite hard uh, for a user to understand what is actually in there. So uh, next year also um, for Podium Kunstbin.net, the presentation we saw this morning by Remco, we are a partner in that and uh, we will publish a, a subset of, for our music collections, uh, specifically for Podium Kunstbin.net. So we really want to work with uh, users to um, improve the usability and improve the descriptions. Uh, we want to publish, if possible, more metadata fields under an open license and also, once they're available, at other distributions. Um, so, yeah, thank you for uh, listening and uh, Bob and I are happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. I wonder, do we have any questions in the audience? Hello, this is um, Paul Duchesne. I was, I was just wondering if you could um, possibly share any like that transformation to Turtle, whether you've used kind of custom systems or you've used um, any kind of pre-existing tools. Yeah, I, I think I would have to uh, ask my colleague Willem to <laughs> answer that question. You saw the publication flow in four steps. Um, and uh, it's actually just um, getting all the data from a spreadsheet <coughs> and convert that to, uh, to Turtle using... Um, uh, yeah, just uh, <coughs> uh, custom-built software. So yeah, it's not really something that we 
publish. It's something that we use. Um, and that's just a practical way of uh, getting it done. So instead of uh, having to find some way of uh, <clears throat> having like an, uh, uh, an edit editing uh, system that also has the publication possibility, uh, yeah, we just decided let's let's just build it ourselves and manage it uh, ourselves. It's uh, as, as you have seen, it's about uh, 11 data sets at the moment, and uh, yeah, it's it's quite functional. It can, can be improved uh, uh, later, but uh, if you ever want to uh, know more details, then we <laughs> should talk later. <laughs> yeah. I can say something about this too. Uh, we need them within the project of the data set register. We also talk to a lot of suppliers, uh, vendors of collection management systems to promote uh, the, the data set descriptions, the API. So there are already several um, uh, content uh, collection management systems which can make uh, and publish these uh, data set descriptions, but not all. So there's also uh, the possibility to make them by hand. There's a form on the, on the website, datasetregister.nl which you can just fill in and at the end of the road you've got some uh, JSON LD which you can then post on your website or even on, on GitHub uh, so we can get to this uh, data. Thank you. Any more questions online? Yeah, you have one at the back. Since archives now are visited online, um, we can't, we are, um, I think we're in our institution for example we have to measure the visitors we have. So and that's also a use of our portal and I just thought about um, it would be so great n not to have to be rely only on portals of like sole institutions but to have like shared ones but I, it just came to my mind that um, it might be a hindrance using shared portals where you can't measure your um, how many users you have and uh, uh, visitors you have, and yeah. But I'm, I, actually, I, I think archives shouldn't be measured by the number of visitors. But okay. Thank you. That was Marion Jacks. I, I agree. Um, as an institution, you want your your data, your your heritage objects, to be uh, used, be viewed by the by the public. The f first thing you think of is your own website, but as you start sharing data, it's all over the world. And uh, I think it helps getting your uh, objects into the world with your end users when aggregators and web portals use your data. It becomes less visible uh, in amount of uh, visitor numbers, but I, I think it really helps that the end purpose that your objects are being viewed and used by a lot more people. Uh, but I, th I really think that you, it's a very important point you touch upon and there's still a lot of advocating we also have to do within our institution to actually uh, get people to understand this principle that we not necessarily want to have a, a number of visitors for our web portal but that we want to increase the reach of our collection materials. So, yeah. Anybody else? Any ideas or questions? No? I think that's it then. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you.